really cash on hand is the thing we're talking about. And as we look at the spending uh, beneath that, you know, in the most recent report in, in, in August, Governor Romney once again, as he did in June and July, raised over $100 million. Now that's a very large amount of money, a lot more than the president's been raising. And it's being reflected in the spending. Americans for Prosperity, which is a, a, a super PAC on the Republican side, Restore Our Futures, the Romney PAC, the Republican National Committee, it goes on and on. And you'll see that the spending now, when you look at this sort of group by group, uh, Restore Our Future, the Romney PAC, American Crossroads, which is run by Karl Rove, who was an aide to George Bush, and they've got a couple. Americans for Prosperity, which is run by a couple of guys called the Koch Brothers, who are a couple of brothers who are raising millions and millions of dollars for a campaign. You can see the, uh, if you're in the red and blue game, okay, the blue's not looking too good these days, okay? This is, uh, this is a big problem from the Democratic perspective. In fact, if you aggregate the total outside spending, as of you know the end of August, so just in two uh, recent weeks, you can see that the president's being outspent massively. And by the way, four years ago, I showed you before that campaign to campaign he outspent McCain three to one. The outside spending in 2004 on the Democratic side over the Republican side was four to one. So <laughs> you know the tables have been turned in large measure because the Supreme Court ruled on Citizens United. Now I want to talk a little bit about the ad wars uh, and show you some of the advertising that if you were a typical swing voter and you lived in a place like Virginia or Colorado uh, or Ohio or Florida, this is what you'd be seeing day after day. I'll just go through a bunch of them right now. Some think Obamacare is the same as free health care, but nothing is free. Obama is rating $716 billion from Medicare, changing the program forever, taxing wheelchairs and pacemakers, raising taxes on families making less than $120,000. Free health care comes at a very high price. The Romney Lion Plan will restore Medicare funding and protect and strengthen the program for the next generation. I met Romney and I approve this message. In 1996, President Clinton and a bipartisan Congress helped end welfare as we know it by requiring work for welfare. But on July 12th, President Obama quietly announced a plan to gut welfare reform by dropping work requirements. Under Obama's plan, you wouldn't have to work and wouldn't have to train for a job. They just sent you your welfare check. And welfare to work goes back to being plain old welfare. Mitt Romney will restore the work requirement because it works. I'm Mitt Romney, and I approve this message. Uh, by the way, can I say that I just showed one welfare article of Governor Romney. I'm going to try not to be too partisan today, but uh, I can't resist on this one. He's actually run five welfare acts. That was one of five. So welfare has been the issue that he's advertised on most in the last five weeks. And you know we can talk about that later. I've got my theories as to why. This president can ask us to. Actually, I'm in 1996, to President. This president can ask us. To, uh, in 1996. Um, I just want to. I just want to introduce this next ad that I'm going to show. Yesterday, Governor Romney's campaign uh, shipped out 15 ads to eight states. The 15 ads are each tailored for the individual states. I'm going to show you the ad that they're running, one of the two ads they're running in Ohio. And I want to talk a little bit about the significance of that, what it means. These ads are all alike in that they come from his convention speech. Uh, they're different in that in, 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 in Iowa they're talking about the deficit, in Ohio they're talking about defense spending. They're, they're targeted ads for each state. But this will give you an example of the, of the advertising campaign that started yesterday uh, for Governor Ron. President Clinton. This president can ask us to be patient. This president can tell us it was someone else's fault, but this president cannot tell us that you're better off today than when he took office. Here in Ohio, we're not better off under President Obama. His defense cuts will weaken national security and threaten over 20,000 Ohio jobs. The Romney plan reverse Obama defense cuts, strengthen our military, and create over 450,000 new jobs for Ohio. So that's what people are seeing, and this is where they're seeing them. And this is, I think, the most important point I want to leave. This may be the most important slide I have, except the last one, which I'm telling you, take the money and go to the bookie with the last one, all right? So, now, here are the states that Governor Romney's campaign yesterday put up 15 ads in. Eight battleground states, Nevada, Colorado, Iowa, Ohio, Virginia, North Carolina, Florida, and New Hampshire. Those are, as of today, I think it would be fair to say, the battlegrounds. At least the Romney campaign considers them the battlegrounds. I would say, when you know the media by, 
from the, the media buy is the objective manifestation of strategic intent in presidential campaigns. I learned that in law school. It was about contracts, but now I've uh, applied it to politics. And this is where it's at. And, and the good news, I think, from the Democratic perspective, we'll see where we are in a couple of weeks, but as of today, uh, if those are the battlegrounds, in order for Governor Romney to win, I would argue, given the other states that we're likely to win, the Democrats, he's going to have to draw the equivalent of an inside straight. Okay? He's going to have to win seven of those eight if he wants to get 270 electoral votes. So right now, the playing field, while he's got the money, the playing field, at least the one they went up on yesterday, I would argue, favors the president in his re-election. Let me show you what the president's telling people. This message. Oh, beautiful, four spacious skies, four amber waves of gray, four purple mountains, majesty, above the fruit and flame. America, America, God shed his grace on thee, and cry. seen a lot of that in the target states. The middle class is carrying a heavy load in America, but Bernie doesn't see it. Under the Romney plan, a middle class family will pay an average of up to $2,000 more a year in taxes, while at the same time giving multimillionaires like himself a $250,000 tax cut. So, Romney hits the middle class harder and gives millionaires an even bigger break. Is that the way forward for America? I'm Barack Obama, and I approve this message. And, and, and finally, I uh, an ad that I read a few weeks ago, and I think we may see you again for the president. Over the next four months, you have a choice to make. Not just between two political parties, or even two people. It's a choice between two very different plans for our country. Governor Romney's plan would cut taxes for the folks at the very top. Roll back regulations on big banks, and he says that if we do, our economy will grow and everyone will benefit. But you know what? We tried that top-down approach. It's what caused the mess in the first place. I believe the only way to create an economy built to last is to strengthen the middle class, asking the wealthy to pay a little more so we can pay down our debt in a balanced way, so that we can afford to invest in education, manufacturing, and homegrown American energy for good middle-class jobs. Sometimes politics can seem very small, but the choice you face, it couldn't be bigger. I'm Barack Obama, and I approve this message. So I think you've just seen in a couple of minutes what millions of people are seeing all across America in terms of what the two campaigns are saying about themselves and mostly about each other. You know, the attacks on Romney, which are about his record in business, his record in government, uh, the attacks on the president about uh, where we are. But we've seen the campaign perspective. But the real perspective of this campaign, frankly, is not going to be from the campaigns, at least in my view. It's going to come from independent expenditure, outside super PACs, and they're going to be the dominant voice in terms of paid political communication between now and Election Day. And I want to show you what that voice is looking like from, from the president's perspective and also from the Republican side as well. That's going to be you know, a lot of tough hits. I, I worked for Senator Kennedy in 1994 when he ran against Mitt Romney. And we ran some pretty tough ads against Romney and his record at paying capital and business. And that effect, that 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 uh, that approach proved to be very effective. And we're going to see that again, certainly from the president's side. So I, I want you now to take a look at what the super PACs are doing and what they're likely to do. And by the way, when I showed that as eight states before, I would not be surprised to see the super PACs now in the next couple of days on the Republican side start to show up in places like Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. And when that happens, it's it's a whole new ballgame. So here's what the super PACs are telling people. First, the president's priorities. Go ahead. I contributed to that. Governor Romney promised that he would bring jobs to this state. By the time Governor Romney left office, we had fallen to 47th in the nation in terms of job growth. Governor <coughs> Romney cares about big business. He cares about tax cuts for wealthy people. And I certainly do not believe that he cares about my hardworking employees. I feel like I was duped by Mitt Romney. I'm going to vote for President Obama. Priorities USA Action is responsible for the content of this advertising. So that's the president's super PAC. Some people say there's a war on women. We agree. It's a war being waged in our economy 
Under President Obama, the number of women living in poverty has skyrocketed, hit hardest in every poverty-related category. 17 million women now in poverty, 800,000 more than when Obama took office, 7.5 million women in extreme poverty, 4 out of 10 female-headed families stuck in poverty. The poverty rate for Hispanic women growing faster than any other group to 25%, and 2.5 million women over 65 are impoverished too, and the job market in Obama's economy, women aren't faring as well as other groups. 